think what we see, Ray, honestly, versus even last year, but particularly versus two or three years ago, a much faster activation in LED. Uh, we're much more excited about where it's going. We expected a little bit slower two or three years ago, but I think with the changes, I think with the cost positions coming down, and I also think from a customer standpoint, the receptiveness and the way they've developed their own education, it's all coming together in our view, it's all coming together. So we see a lot of positive things happening, I have to say, a lot of positive things. Energy costs and the need to take energy costs out is clearly a driver. I think price is a driver to some degree, Ray. I think the biggest driver we've seen the last year is I think the general education. So I think the knowledge of customers, the ability to acquire more knowledge to suppliers to work closer with them, it's obviously what G's trying to do. I mean, I think if you look at Lux and what you're doing in terms of education, this whole event and what you do generally, I just think the education and knowledge around the product and the applications has increased so much the last 18 months. I think that's actually the biggest driver, to be honest with you. I think retail, you've already seen the tipping point. Yeah, I mean, if you look at your awards last night, look at the summer stuff we're doing, for example, with Next, etc. So I think the tipping point's sort of there. Um, I think on commercial office, it's getting there. I mean, I think with the linear fluorescent, there's some of the dynamics on T5, the price points are still challenging. But what we see on commercial office, I think there's a desire, and I think a senior management desire to buy into LED in terms of what it represents in terms of branding, what it represents in terms of messaging. So there's a much greater desire to transition and an acceptance for, let's say, four or five year paybacks, which maybe won't be accepted on something else like air conditioning. So I think there's an acceptance for LED a little bit slower activation, but we're seeing it. I think on outdoor, it's uh, it's there again already. Uh, I think we see the activation there. I think on the outdoor piece, I think there's still a possibility for financing. So I see you, you sit in the UK. I think financing will drive activation more. So I think the tipping point is coming, but I think finance is gonna push it a little bit more. So retail, I think it's there. Commercial office, it's slowly getting there. Outdoor, it's there. I think financing sort of tips it tips it the whole way, yeah. A lot of it is about branding in terms of your brand in the marketplace, your image in the marketplace, you being a leader around energy efficiency, and I think people associate correctly that LED plays to that branding, yeah. So we are seeing more higher end commercial office spaces and developers buying into LED when the paybacks may not be as favorable as let's say retail elsewhere, but we are seeing that. We are seeing that. G's always been agnostic in terms of, you know, if you need a CMH, you need a CFL, you need an LED, we're still investing in those technologies, clearly much more on LED than the others. I think we've still got a strong CMH portfolio, even on outdoor with Streetwise, so I'd say we're agnostic. But clearly in terms of, if you look to the future, we believe, and we've invested a lot, and you guys know about the infusion module that we have in our, our luminaires, clearly we see that to be a path where we think the industry will go and will buy into, and we are seeing that already in a lot of re retail applications. So I'd say we're agnostic generally, but we do have a general focus, specific focus on the module. It's not easy. <laughs> it's not easy. I mean, it's not, it's not, I mean, it's not easy for two reasons, right? It's not easy because employees, there's a lot of our employees, of course, on traditional technologies and they fear for their future. So you have to manage the employee transition and developing new skills. So I think the employee, but in terms of marketplace, it's not easy because clearly 70% of our investment is going into LED. And so you've always got a dynamic where customers still want next generation CMH, further advancements on CFL, so it's not easy. Clearly our focus is on LED. Uh, what we try to do, Ray, honestly, is just to make sure that where we've had strong products before, like CMH, as you know, with Streetwise, the, the CMH for retail, Allergen, we're trying to maintain those, we're trying to maintain them. But clearly, future generations, it's more on the LED side, yeah. And we, we, we have an advantage like ourselves, our friends here at Philips, Osram, we have an advantage of scale, yeah? So financially, we have an advantage to manage that transition, clearly, yeah. Our sales for LED are about 11%, yeah, 11, 12%. I think if you adjust for chips, it's within a point. I think it's within a point of Philips. So we're seeing, we're seeing good growth on LED. I mean, we're seeing it globally. We're seeing it in Europe, uh, particularly on the lamp side. We're beginning to see it now on luminaires, uh, but we're into about 11, 11% of our sales, yeah. 
across Europe we're seeing a migration. I, think, I don't think it's a regional difference in terms of LED migration. I think it's more in terms of the sophistication and the knowledge. So what I'd say is if you look at like the UK industry, particularly within retail, it's a very knowledgeable industry, Ray, right? yeah? and it's also helped by the fact that you guys you know, help. So I'd say there's more sophistication in the industry. So in terms of the sale, it's in some ways more challenging because there's more sophistication and knowledge. Uh, and in some ways it's more rewarding because there's more sophistication and knowledge, so it helps guys like G. So I'd say there's penetration and LED everywhere. I'd say Northern Europe, certainly UK, Nordic, Germany, we see more sophistication and a more higher end acceptance of, let's say, a branded product like G. In Southern Europe, and obviously part of the economic dynamics too, we see, I'd say, more price conscious discussion. So it's, it's still activated, it's just a different type of discussion, yeah? positive for the industry is that it, it, it does force the traditional, the big guys like ourselves, Philips, to be better. I mean, it does force us because it forces you to focus and focus and focus on cost, yeah, and design for cost out. So in fairness, there are benefits to the industry. And I think it's helpful for big guys to make sure that they don't lose focus of that. So there is a benefit. Um, the flip in terms of the general question on quality, we're not doing enough in terms of regulation. That's not our job, that's the government's job. So. We're not doing enough there, but the industry's trying to do more, as you know, the ELC's trying to do more. Um, and I think a big piece of that, and you again, what you're doing, is education with customers. What we do find, Ray, versus two years ago, customers' knowledge and education is a hell of a lot better than it was two years ago. A hell of a lot better.